Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and now that we're in 2021, let's take a look at some of the best Unity videos of 2020. There were a total of 115 videos published covering all sorts of topics, everything from simple tutorials to machine learning, shader effects, game analysis, complete courses, and much, much more. I made a really nice page with the more interesting videos grouped into a bunch of categories. Check that out if you want to browse these videos in your own time, there's too many awesome ones for me to mention in just this video. The year actually started off quite well, back in January the channel hit 100,000 subscribers, so thank you all for that and I really hope you've learned a ton from all of these videos. Then a video that took a massive amount of work to make, My Game Dev Journey. In there I talk about how I started programming 20 years ago making IRC scripts, then I moved on to Flash and finally to Unity. I'm really happy with that video, it's a really nice summary of all the projects that I've done in all that time. It was a total of over 40 games. And it should also serve as an inspiration to you to take your own time on your own journey and just focus on getting better day by day. Then when the whole thing of 2020 started, I made a video on my tips from working from home. I've been working from home for many many years now, so if you're just starting, hopefully my tips can help you. Then for a really interesting complete game named Wash Your Hands, this was obviously very topical at the time, and it was also the very first time that I experimented with making a 3D video. I mainly stick with 2D since making textures is easier than 3D meshes, but I had some asset packs lying around so that's what I used. It's an interesting minigame, you go around clearing up all the nasty particles while telling people to wash their hands. And visually I'm quite pleased with the end result. Some really good looking 3D world with some flat sprites and lots and lots of effects. I made a bunch more complete games. One of them was I Made Doom in Unity. It was great to remake one of the old time classics and make it work exactly like the original. Another one was a simple match 3 game. I needed this for a video that I was planning, so I made it from scratch in just under 6 hours and recorded the whole thing. And I also participated in the Mixin Game Jam where I made a really interesting racing RTS in just 48 hours. As the name implies, it's a mix of racing and RTS where you drive around the car and also control a bunch of other car units. It's a very unique design. Speaking of complete games, this year was also when I launched the CodeMonkey Steam app. I've been thinking about doing something like this for ages and finally I managed to do it. I wanted something to group all the videos and all the games that I've made into one nice complete package and that's exactly what it is. It's completely free so we'll go ahead pick it up on Steam. It includes all of the various games that I've made on the channel, like the Wash Your Hands game that I just mentioned, so you can easily get the app and play through all of those games. It also has some really interesting interactive tutorials. It's a nice mini game that teaches you C Sharp and Unity as well as game design. Also looks really good with some nice assets. And on the app there's also a section for my own Steam games and more importantly they have a list of the various tutorial videos that I've made where I remade some of those elements. So for example you can go and play my Steam games and then go watch those videos to see how those systems were made. Really interesting stuff. As for Unity tools and features, I also covered a bunch of them. I made a simple video on Unity Analytics, definitely something you should use when making your own games. Another one on Game Simulation, which is a very interesting tool that lets you run your game tons and tons of times on the cloud in parallel. It's very useful for testing your game thousands of times and coming up with the perfect balance levels. I also made a video on the visual effect graph. This is how you can exploit the power of the GPU to render millions and millions of particles. I did a general overview and then a nice scatter effect. And finally, near the end of the year, I got into machine learning using Unity ML Agents. This is a fascinating toolkit that is actually very easy to use and gives you the full power of machine learning. I cover the basics of machine learning, then how to use imitation learning, and how to teach an AI how to play Flappy Bird and drive a car. Machine learning has a massive amount of potential, so definitely look forward to some more videos on how you can use this tool to help you make better games. Back in March, I made a ton of dots videos, covering physics, lists, prefabs, events, and subscenes. I implemented pathfinding in dots, and I even made an awesome video on how you can combine super fast dots pathfinding with normal game objects. That was really awesome and insanely fast. So back then I covered lots of topics, and I even made a complete game entirely using dots just to showcase how it was already very capable at the time. I haven't been back to using DOT since then, but based on how good it was already a year ago, I can't wait to try it again. I also experimented with a different type of video, watching some popular AAA games and analyzing their trailers to see how all of those mechanics are made. Start off with the very first video, analyzing the Watch Dogs trailer. 
looking at all the mechanics shown in the trailer and teaching you how you could build them in your own games. Then I analyze the Spider-Man trailer, which is full of solid mechanics to learn from, and then Ghost of Tsushima, which really has some interesting stealth mechanics, visual effects and a hookshot. This is an interesting format that I definitely want to keep doing. The only issue with this is that it requires me to find some good gameplay trailer that showcases a bunch of things. Usually those trailers come out at E3, and since there was no E3 last year, that kinda limits things. But there's lots of awesome ones from previous years, so I'll probably be looking at those. Game design is really a timeless discipline, so you can learn just as much from older titles as well as from new ones. And in December, when Cyberpunk launched, I did another similar experiment, except instead of watching the trailer, I played through the game and selected a bunch of mechanics to then go remake in Unity. This format has the benefit that I don't need to find the perfect official gameplay trailer, I can just play the game myself. The goal with this was to show you how these AAA games look impossibly complex, but many of the things they do, you can definitely do them for yourself in Unity. And remaking those mechanics was a lot of fun, so this is also a format that I intend to keep doing. As for tutorials, there were obviously tons of them. One of the main reasons why I started this channel was to share my knowledge with all of you, and also because I wanted to explore tons of different topics and continue on my own learning journey. So with that, one really awesome mini-series was on a crafting system. Back in 2019, I made an inventory system, and then in 2020, I made a Minecraft-like crafting system built on top of it. It works exactly as you expect. Drag the recipe in the correct position and drag the output item. Later, I made a video on scriptable objects. This is how you can define a data structure to create individual objects to hold some data. I also made a video on custom inspectors with custom fields, images, buttons, and so on. And finally, I combined everything and made the crafting system with scriptable objects and a custom editor. It's super easy and very visual to create a completely brand new item and define a brand new recipe for how to make it. I'm really happy with the final result on this one, definitely need to use it more often in some more videos. I made a shadow graph overview video, just teaching the basics for how it works, and then some tutorial videos on interesting effects. One of them on a simple grass wind shader, it makes the sprite deform in such a way that it looks like wind, and another one for a really awesome building construction effect. I really need an effect like this for my course and this is what I came up with. I really like how it looks, it seems as if the building is being printed line by line, really cool. Also, related to Shadograph, I made a video on how to use the Shadograph to make custom post-processing effects. So every effect that I've already covered, like for example the solve, can be applied to the whole screen. One really interesting video was on converting 2D into 3D and vice versa. I've made a lot of videos using 2D as a demo because it's simply easier for me to draw sprites than make meshes, but for the most part, all of my videos work both in 2D and 3D. But I do see that comment a lot, going into something like the inventory system video and asking if it works in 3D. So I made this video to showcase how easy it is to convert systems between 2D and 3D. It's usually very, very easy. There were a bunch of videos regarding enemies. Starting off with a simple AI, just teaching how to use a basic state machine to make some sort of basic enemy logic. Then a battle system for spawning enemies when the player gets near or triggers some sort of condition. I made a really awesome boss fight, again using a state machine to define an interesting boss battle with various stages. Also made a melee combat system that features smart targeting so it knows which target it should prioritize. And a video covering several methods for how to find targets. Pick the one that best suits your needs. Also related was the video on various methods for shooting projectiles. All of them with pros and cons, it all depends on what projectile you're trying to simulate. Then I made two player controllers. One of them very standard, just a normal top-down player controller. You can move around, it has physics and collisions and so on. It even features an instant dash and a nice dodge roll. This is the standard controller that I use in most of my top-down videos. And another really interesting one based on a modular design. So the whole thing is based on building several modules that then work on top of each other. You can use a module that just has some dumb movement or easily swap it out for one that uses pathfinding. Use one for player control or swap it out for one with enemy AI. It's a really interesting design and by going through it you will learn a ton of things like using c -sharp interface. For some more AI, I also made a simple tower defense AI, place down towers and have them target enemies. Then a video on a simple RTS control system. I definitely would like to make some more RTS videos as soon as I have the time. And if you're a fan of games like XCOM, I made an awesome grid combat system. It's turn-based, features two different teams, and it's based on a grid. It's a great starting point for any strategy game. I made a video on using several methods of interacting with objects, using a button, position, item, and so on. 
I show it being used on a door, but really they can be used for any object. Then for some more general videos, I made one on the math behind splines and how you can make some really awesome smooth shapes. You can then use them to move a car around or make some roads or really just any smooth curve. Somewhat related to that is the video on animation curves and how you can use them for so much more than just animation. One video on a simple chat bubble, this is the example like I used in my game Battle Royale Tycoon. A really great video on animated cursors, so this one is exactly what I use in my Survivor Squad games. And I also made a tooltip that works perfectly, always sits on screen and follows the mouse. Then a video on how to make Unity as a transparent window. This was a lot of fun to research. You can essentially do anything you can with Unity and use it as an overlay on top of your desktop. One example was I made a simple assistant like the ones that existed back in the 90s. This is also how I made the annotation program that I then used in the Game Dev Reacts videos. And another interesting one was in making a launcher. You make a Unity program that then launches other programs. So this one is pretty much exactly how my Steam app works. It's a hub for all the other projects that I've made. There were a bunch of C-Sharp focused videos. First of all, a very quick video showcasing C-Sharp basics in just 10 minutes. It gives you a great overview of the language. Then some videos going in-depth on various C-Sharp topics. One on the basics of loops, the various types you have and how each differ from each other. A video on events and how they help you keep your code clean and nicely decoupled. Also a video on delegates, which lets you store a function inside a field, very useful. One covering interfaces, which lets you define certain behavior on your types, like for example having an interface for every object that can be damaged. And one on generics, which are insanely useful. They'll let you write code that works with any class, so this is extensively used in my grid class. And finally, I made a super useful video on my process for solving the very common error of null reference exceptions. In there, I mentioned my step-by-step -step process for how I always solve that error. If you go through all of those videos, you will certainly learn a ton about c -sharp and program. And as I've already mentioned, I made tons of DOTS videos and machine learning tutorials. So yep, in 2020, there were tons of topics covered this year. Everything from simple to complex, some based on programming, others based on rendering, others on game design and various Unity tools. I'd definitely love to hear from you which ones you found most useful. This year was also when I finally decided to try making some complete courses. I've wanted for a long time to do some complete courses. Essentially, they allow me to cover a lot more and speak about a lot more things that I just can't fit in a 20 minute video. So with that in mind, I first made the Builder Defender course. I'm really happy with the final result. You can definitely learn a ton, which is applicable to a lot of genres like city builders, tower defense, survival games, and so on. The course starts completely from scratch. The very first video is on creating a brand new empty project, and it goes step by step until the final completed game. It's around 20 hours, so I can definitely go into a lot more depth than in my normal videos. All of the lectures have their own project files as downloadable resources, so you can start from the beginning or pick up from anywhere you want. This was my first course, essentially showcasing making a game exactly the way that I make my own games, using code. But then I also made another massive course, this one all about making games internally using visual scripting. I specifically designed the course to include not one, but three games in order to cover lots of different genres. This was an interesting challenge, and it definitely showed me how it is absolutely possible to build anything you want using solely visual scripting. The action RPG and the FPS are some pretty complex games, and they all work perfectly without a single line of code. And just like the Builder Defender course, this one also starts completely from scratch and contains all of the downloadable project files for all of the lectures. So all in all, I'm really happy with those two courses, and based on the reviews, it seems that people like them as well. I definitely want to do some more, although they do take a massive amount of time, so it will be a while before the next one. Speaking of courses, I also made an interesting video comparing the pros and cons of free tutorials versus paid courses. In there, I talk about the various differences and how courses are better for learning all the tiny things that no one mentions in a normal tutorial, and I also talk about how tutorials are excellent if you already know what you're looking for. It's a really great video, and I'd encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. There's tons of benefits to both types if you know how to use them. Alright, so that was the year 2020. Tons of awesome stuff with 115 videos in total. Check the page on the website, which contains links to all of these videos and a bunch more. There might be some there that you may not have seen and you might find quite useful. I'd love to hear from you which ones you found the most useful. Thank you all for continuing to watch the videos. I really hope you've learned a ton from them and I hope to continue making content that you find educational and entertaining. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. 
Go to patreon.com slash unity codemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.